If you're noticing that your model may be performing not as well as you first thought, then taking extra measures to evaluate your model may be needed. One of the best ways to do this is to perform cross-validation on your model. A quick overview of cross-validation is that in your entire training set, it makes a pass by first taking a subset of that data out of training to be a validation set and validates on that subset. It then does this a specific number of times that you can configure on different subsets of your data. Each pass will produce a metric based on the type of algorithm. And the way to measure cost of validation is to take the average of this metric, and if it is close to the original performance metric, then your model will perform well under new data. If it isn't close, then you risk having a model that has overfit to your training data. With that basic introduction to cross-validation, let's see how to do it in ML.NET. I'm in a .NET Core 2 console project in Visual Studio, and I already have a pipeline that we've done in a previous video. In order to do cross-validation, we need to first create an instance of the cross-validator class. We can pass in some properties, and in fact, currently we need to pass in the kind property. This is the type of micro-utils trainer kinds, and since the pipeline is using a regression algorithm, we need to set it to signature regressor trainer. Now that we have our cross-validator instantiated, let's actually perform the cross-validation. To do this, we need to use the instance we created and call the cross-validate method on it. This method is generic and similar to the train method from the previous video, we should add our input class salary, salary data and our output class salary prediction. As a parameter, we will just pass in the pipeline that we created above. Now let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. What it's doing here is that it's performing a train and evaluate on the data for the default number of folds, which is two. It then captures the metrics for each run, so let's put those to use next. But we can also specify the number of folds the cross validator can use. To do this, just fill in the num folds property of the cross validator class. I'll set this one to 5. In order to print out the results, we can use the regression metrics collection to get a list of all the regression metric objects that it took for each fold. We can then print out each of these with the for each extension method. And that's a bit useful, but what we really want to know is how the average cross-validation scores compare to what we got when we ran the evaluate method. To do that, we can use some link magic to get the sum of our root mean squared. Then we can print out the sum divided by the count of the regression metrics collection. And then we can print it out to the console. If you've seen the previous video, we got an R squared of 96% and a root mean squared of 4400. So what this tells us is that there is some overfitting happening to our model. So that's a quick look at how to perform cross-validation in ML.NET to get a better sense of how your model can perform on new data that it hasn't seen before.